So this is actually going to be a short one, um, basically because I not only spent all day working, but I still have work to do. Um, I'm going to, after this is done, uh, draft and schedule a newsletter for agoristnexus.com. Feel free to subscribe to our email uh, newsletter if you want. You'll get like access to uh, a variety of things. Uh, we, we put out occasional periodicals. Uh, we have a rundown of our latest content and what to expect coming up. A variety of things, you know. Uh, and there's a lot coming up too. <laughs> Not the least of which is one of the documentaries I'm working on where we're coming to a head on that. So we want to start hitting the gas on quite a bit of that. But either way... The point is that, like, I spent most of the day working, and uh, and then I had uh, some stuff to take care of in the evening and my normal family stuff on Wednesday. So, like, I pushed all my stuff until nowish. Um, but there's part of one of the things that I did, uh, which is valuable to discuss, I think. I made this article against the uh, California, like guidelines, which really are more restrictions than anything else, because you know some Karens are going to call the cops on some people for not following them, for interaction on Thanksgiving, for family get-togethers and shit. And the exactly batshit way Gavin Newsom is handling that. So, uh, that's going to come out tomorrow. It should piss off a certain subset of people who either like Gavin Newsom or want the rest of the country to be just like California for some reason. But uh, as an ex-California resident that will very likely someday also be one again, uh, I know that California can be ass cancer, uh, and that the politicians in charge of it are exactly bad and not good. Um, so I, I decided to write this rant against it, especially since, you know, I still got people there. And uh, it fills me with resentment and rage to see the way things have been handled there. Uh, I mean, everywhere, ultimately. No place is perfect, and even the best places with regard to COVID policy are still extremely Republican and act like it. Like, I like how everybody gets to pretend that DeSantis is some sort of you know small government hero because he's he's like... Uh, speaking out against, against lockdowns and mandates and shit, when in reality, he super funded the police and gave them bonuses and said that if they didn't quell anything that was disorderly, uh, their funding would be cut. Uh, that's insane, because that basically means that the police can't be on your side uh, in the case of tyranny. In the case of tyranny, cops have to support uh, the orders of DeSantis because otherwise they're in, in dereliction of duty and they'll lose their fucking funding. You know, so even even the biggest uh, anti-COVID measure places are still very fucking authoritarian and tyrannical and fascist and it's not good, right? But these restrictions are pretty fucking bad and I thought I'd write an article against them. Um... And there's a lot more articles coming, too. Like, I'm going to send one tomorrow and the next day and probably also the next day because I've got a lot on my mind, let's just say. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to go over that's in the article that's coming out tomorrow is the idea that you should leave religion and politics at the door when you're having something like Thanksgiving. I disagree. Strongly. Um, I think that, you know, it's important to speak out against these whenever the opportunity presents itself. And it presents itself a lot. But people don't want to talk about it with family at all. Mostly because they fear the consequences of coming out with their beliefs. Now, you know... I get it if your beliefs are garbage, like if you're a Nazi or a tanky or, you know, if you support pedophile rights or something. Yeah, maybe keep that to yourself. But if you're an anarchist, for instance, and you want to change the world, 
you want the world to have a better culture that's more commensurate with freedom, you're going to have to say some words. You know? You're going to have to speak the fuck up. And when people say, don't discuss religion or politics with family, what they're really saying is, silo yourself off from a potential support structure in the event of Armageddon. In the event of martial law, shit hits the fan, total crackdown, dystopia, apocalypse. Just cut off the people who you could have enough of a functional relationship with despite them knowing what you believe. Because you don't want the stress. Or because you don't want to risk knowing that that's the kind of person they are. That they're the kind of person who would ditch you over your beliefs. Because let's be clear, that's fucked up. If somebody ditches you because you want more freedom, fuck them. You know? So if they ditch you because you want more freedom, they just showed their true colors, that they're controllers, that they want to keep you in line and that they value the state over their relationship with you. That's like a dodged bullet, my friendo. So take it as a mark of pride. It's going to suck. There was a time when my family literally wouldn't talk to me because I told them I, you know, helped seed some government leaks. And I'm not sorry, right? Um, it, like, just to be super clear, I wasn't, like, in on any super elite group. This was, like, WikiLeaks tier shit. Um, so, like, my family wanted to stop talking to me for a bit there. But I persisted, and I never stopped doing anything, Right? And I also never said that what I did was wrong. That's what you have to do. You have to stand firm. There were months when my mother and sister wouldn't talk to me. Those months hurt. I, I cried many times because I thought the state had robbed my family from me. By way of propaganda. And legal recourse. But that didn't end up being true. Because it turns out that even in a family where they strongly disagree with me, family ties are stronger than statist force. Ask yourself, if you don't have a family like that, why do you still want to talk to them? If you don't have a family who could either agree with what seems manifestly true to you or disagree but not dissociate simply because you want total freedom. Do you want that family? Do you want a family that can't either respectfully disagree or respect you enough to accept it when you have a good argument for your beliefs? I don't. I want a family I can talk to openly about what I think. And I want a family that I can be honest with. And I have that family, but it took a lot of fucking effort on everyone's part, not just mine. I'm not pretending it's easy for them to hear. You know? But it, it really does separate the wheat from the chaff, proverbially speaking. It really does. And I feel like so many people value the idea of the relationship over the health of the relationship. Because let me tell you, spending your life being controlled by an invisible hand of your family, that's empty. Because there, there's going to come a point at which you resent them more for what you had to give up when you might not have even had to give it up to begin with, or when you resent them for what you had to give up and, like, you had to give it up because they weren't going to accept you. Right? 
those points are going to rot the relationship because you're going to think about those whether or not you do what I'm suggesting, whether or not you stand up for yourself, whether or not you bring up uncomfortable subjects at the Thanksgiving dinner table. And there's part of the thing here where they can't click away at Thanksgiving dinner. They're, they're more of a, a captive audience at Thanksgiving dinner and any other holiday dinner, you know? So if you use that opportunity and the fact that there might be built-in trust, you might be able to convince them a lot better than somebody random on the internet can. Because, well, if X person believes it, then it can't be too insane, right? Those are the justifications. Those are the ways that, you know, you can... It just... It seems to me that people should use their trust circles better, more often. It seems to me that they should be more open to communication. And the fact that they're not creates a lot of unnecessary divides and a lot of unnecessary tension because nobody wants to be the first one to bring up uncomfortable things. I mean, I, I do it all the time. I literally read the draft for my latest article to my father and sister today during our weekly call. Um, and they actually agreed with it. There's a potential that you can talk to people and have constructive dialogue. I'm not saying call your aunt a piece of shit. I'm not saying fuck you mom or dad or something like that. I'm saying be a good representative of freedom ideals and you might be able to talk your family into seeing things at least a little bit differently each time you talk. That incremental change is more powerful than you could imagine. Anyway, I'm exhausted, and I thought I'd say that because it's been sort of wearing away at me for a long time, and I've got more to say on that too, but that's the essential idea. Either cultivate a family where you can be open and honest and help them see their way to freedom, or maybe accept that they're not interested in you, they're interested in the image of a family. And if they're not willing to work past differences, if they're demanding homogeneity, maybe they're not a very good family and they should work on themselves too. Something to think about, you know? Anyway, I'm going to go get to work. I'm going to continue talking against the dystopia we're experiencing. And uh, tomorrow, obviously, there's going to be another vlog because I'm back on my shit. And I'm getting ready every single day a little bit closer. So, everybody, have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you tomorrow evening for a, another Thanksgiving-related message. Smash the fucking state. Even if it costs you.